Hello everybody, in this video we're going to learn about the properties of divisors, which includes the sum of the divisors of a number n and the number of divisors a number n has. So first we're going to start with the most simple property of divisors, which is the number of divisors any number n can have. So right here we have an arbitrary number n, and we want to figure out how many divisors this number has. So the most useful method for calculating the number of divisors for a number n is by taking its prime factorization. So the prime factorization of a number n would just be taking all the primes and splitting them apart. So for an arbitrary number n, we could write this as prime 1 to the exponent a over a sub 1 times prime sub 2 to the exponent a sub 2 times prime sub 3 to the exponent a sub 3 and all the way on to prime sub k which is the last prime to the power a sub k. Now it's probably a good idea to figure out what a divisor of n would look like in terms of its prime factorization. Obviously, the prime factorization of d would have to only consist of any of these primes above right here. Because if it had any prime that was different from any of the primes in n's factorization, obviously it would never be able to divide n. Because n doesn't even have that prime number in the first place. Along with that, the maximum amount of primes of each type of each distinct prime you can have is this exponent right here. So essentially, we're just choosing the number of primes we want from each prime, prime number 1, prime number 2, prime number 3, all the way up to prime number k. And we're limited to a1 primes of the first type, a2 primes of the second type, and a3 primes of the third type, all the way up to ak primes of the kth type. So obviously this is just a counting problem, and since we can technically have zero of each prime, we technically have a one a sub one plus one choices for the number of first prime that we want. A sub two plus one, and on and on and on. And this goes all the way up to a sub k plus 1. So this formula is relatively simple for calculating the number of divisors any number n has. And we can test this out. For example, if we wanted to find the number of divisors of the number 12, we can see that using our formula, it has 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3 times 2, so it has 6 divisors. And since 12 is a small number that has only 6 divisors, we can easily list out all the divisors to check that we're correct. For example, if we wanted to find the number of divisors of the number 12, we can see that using our formula, it has 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3 times 2, so it has 6 divisors. And since 12 is a small number that has only 6 divisors, we can easily list out all the divisors to check that we're correct. Now what about the sum of divisors for any arbitrary number n? So obviously we're going to use the same general prime factorization because that worked really well for us in calculating the sum of the number of divisors for any number n. However, we're going to start with a simpler value for n. Instead of having this many prime numbers, which could be technically infinite, we're going to just set n to have only two distinct primes. and our prime factorization is just going to look something like this. 
And now we're going to try to figure out how many, what the sum of this is. And we're just going to write out each of the divisors and sum them all up. So as you can see here, I've written out the sum, and it's really complicated, so you might want to take a look at how it's organized. So if you take a closer look at how this is organized, you'll see a pattern with the P2 incrementing by 1 in the each row, while P1 is incrementing by 1 power every column. So I'm just going to give you a second to take a look at how this is organized still. Now it turns out if you factor it, this is what it becomes. Now again, I'm going to give you a second to take a look at how this is organized. You can see that each prime p is just, it's just the sum of each power of a prime p. And if you understand out how distribution works, you can kind of see how these two numbers, how these two expressions are related. Now, it turns out if you have multiple different primes from P1 to P, P sub K, then you'll see that this pattern continues and you'll keep adding on more terms with just sums of powers. So, is there any way to simplify this formula for the sum of powers, for the sum of each divisor of n? Well, there actually is. And the only way to really simplify it is just by simplifying the sum of these powers into a more compact formula. So right here, we're just trying to find a formula for the sum of powers from p to the 0 to p to the k. And it turns out it's actually not that hard to figure out. As with most geometric sequences, we're going to set this equal to s for sum. Now, notice if we multiply s by p, what happens? p times s is equal to p to the 1 plus p to the 2 plus p to the 3 third power dot 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 all the way to p to the k plus 1 power. Obviously, we can see that some parts of the original s inside of this expression. So we can replace some parts of this with s. So this turns out to simplify to p times s equals s minus p to the zeroth power, because we don't really have it here, and adding in a p to the k plus 1 power. So right now, it's just a matter of solving for s. Subtracting s, we have, from both sides, we have p times s minus s equals negative p to the 0, which we can simplify as 1, since any number to the 0th power is 1, plus p to the k plus 1. And right here, we can factor out the s. So we have s times p minus 1 equals, we can change this to p to the k plus 1 minus 1. All I did was just change the order to make it look a little bit less confusing. And we can divide by p minus 1. So it turns out that the sum is equal to p to the k plus 1 minus 1 over p minus 1. So it was all just a matter of clever manipulation to get this formula. So if we substitute this formula back into our sum of divisors formula, we get a, a little bit more compact way of expressing the sum of divisors of any number n. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be making more videos soon about divisor properties. Thanks for watching.